Well, folks, next challenge is going to be heat treating this thing. It is too big to go into the forge. It would be sticking out about that much. With more, probably about that much. And I'll never get an even heat. So what I'm going to do is add this forge, my old forge, to it. And I'm going to butt this one up against this. The first challenge is that this shelf is preventing this one. And I never use this shelf anyway. So I'm going to cut this shelf off and then somehow raise this one up so it's butted right against here. And we'll see if that works. There we go, Monster Forge. <laughs> now I gotta figure out a way to have an even heat across them all. Once the forge has got up to temperature, I use this stainless steel tube so I can put the blade in it and have a more even heat. When heat treating in the forge, I always put the blade in tang first. That's always the thickest part. So that part you need to heat up and then I flip it around. This was the very first normalization cycle and I had the forges way too hot. I had to keep moving the blade around just to make sure it didn't overheat in one section. I was terrified I was gonna melt the copper out of this thing and that would have ruined all the work I put in so far. That's why I was constantly checking it to make sure I wasn't overheating it. You'll notice now that the forge is quite a bit cooler than it was at first. It was a lot easier to control this way. This is my last grain refinement cycle We'll be on to quenching after this. I got a mild piece of steel here and I'm heating up the oil to get ready for the quench. In case you were wondering, more viscous oil actually cools the blade quicker. That's why we heat up the oil a little bit. The heat on the blade looked nice and even, no cold spots. That's what we want. It's best to agitate the blade when it's in the oil. That prevents any bubbles or vapor jacket from forming around the blade and it hardens quickly. Well, folks, it's a Christmas miracle. It's perfectly straight. I don't know if it's hard yet, but we're just going to keep it straight for now. So here it is after heat treat. It uh, came out really nice. I was amazed that uh, it's straight and uh, no warps. I was terrified to melt the copper out of it uh, in the forge and you can see I used that tube which helped a lot. So now I'm going to grind a bit here uh, and test it, uh, test the hardness of it and then we'll do final grinding. There's always a little bit of decarburization on the outside of the blade. You need to grind that off before you do a test. Okay, let's test it. I should mention this is after temper. Right out of the oil, the blade was 65 HRC. Sixty one. It's actually a little high.
All right, so that one was 59 and a half. We'll average it out around 60. I spent a little time cleaning up these fuller areas and then onto the grinding. This was certainly a tough blade to grind. One of the tougher ones I've done in a while. Just with the shape of it, it was hard to get those bevels to not have facets in them. Well folks, here it is after final grinding. Uh, it's still a little rough. I didn't want to take it too far. It was having a hard time keeping this bevel and not putting facets in. So I didn't go much, I kind of did the bevel on 120, but uh, it just means I'm gonna have a lot of hand sanding. Um, I fixed this so that these end right at the bevel, which is what I wanted. Uh, again, I got some, I'll fix some of this with hand sanding. These are tough to put in <laughs> uh, and get right. So um, yeah. <laughs> But uh, I like them. That's it for this episode, folks. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one.